Hi guys, I have another ATX power supply here, it's a 350 watt power supply and this is one we had the other day when I was doing the review on this little ATX power supply tester, yeah? And um, I have the power supply connected uh, to this lead, yeah? And it's connected through this light bulb, this is a current limiter, I have two light bulbs on here. Uh, if you've not seen it before, I'll briefly show you what this does. So this is your AC coming in, 220 volts here, yeah? The neutral goes directly to the power supply and the live is wired via a light bulb so if we just imagine we've got the one light bulb when this switch here is open all the current flows through this light bulb to the power supply and it limits the maximum power that power supply can draw to the wattage of the light bulb in this case 60 watts yeah um on mine i have two light bulbs the other one's 100 watts and they're connected one across the other. So I have both light bulbs in. Then the maximum current this can draw is 160 watts, 100 plus 60, yeah? Or I could take this one out and then the maximum is 100, okay? I also have a switch. So when the switch is closed, it shorts out the light bulb. So this is connected directly through. So these are no longer in the circuit. It's just a straight wire, yeah? And that's this little switch you can see here. Live and limit, yeah? So, what this power supply was doing the other day, I took the 100 watt light bulb out, so I've just got the 60. So I've got no load on the power supply, it's not drawing any power. So this should flash once as the capacitors charge up, you get the initial inrush of current, yeah, to charge the capacitors. And then it should go out, effectively, because with no load on this, it'll be taking almost no wattage, yeah? Even though it's connected to this and the green wire is grounded, so the main supplies are switched on. And what I've found is, I've tried it this morning, sometimes it does what it did the other day, and sometimes it behaves differently. So, if you saw the other video the other day, you'll know that this flashed once, went dim, and when the power supply kicked in, the main 5 volt, 12 volt, 3.3, this came on bright because this was drawing a lot of current, even though there's no load on it. So let's see what it does now. Yeah, there. Yeah, and then it goes, beep, and goes off. So that's what it was doing the other day, but what I've noticed, and I might have to tap it a few times, but sometimes it comes on. That time it didn't. You watch now, I can't I can't do it on video. Let me see if I can get it to do it. No. Can't get it to do it. Let's put the 100 watt bulb in as well. In fact, we'll take this one out. Yeah, so we'll give it a 100 watt. So it can now draw a bit more bit more power let's see what happens with the bulb now yeah let's see what it does yeah it's still going bright it's still doing it so it's obviously drawing a lot of power uh i'm going to try a few times i know this is intermittent yeah uh, i'm not going to make you guys just continually wait on camera so let me see if i can just actually get it to do what it did earlier okay let me pause it and i'll show you when i've got it doing what it was doing Okay, after a number of attempts, I've got it to do it. So the bulb flicked once and went out, yeah? And this uh, tester here is saying that the 12 volts is 11.6, yeah? Uh, 12 volts V1 is 12.1, and 12 volts V2 is flashing, like LL, to say it's not there, I believe. 5 volts standby is 4.9, 3.3 is correctly, yeah? I don't know if this is flashing, because I don't have the this connected to the unit yet yeah, in here um, so let's just plug this in and see what happens okay that's stopped flashing so that's what that is um, so this is 12.1 so it's now working yeah I mean 11.6 and the 12 volts a bit low but it's now working yet it's intermittent if I switch it off yeah and switch it back on again you see, both bulbs came on bright, yeah? It's now drawing a lot of power, 160 watts. Let me show you. You see? And it doesn't power up. So there's something intermittent with it, yeah? You can see that. Um, it takes me a number of times, and I can get it to do what it just did. I'm not sure if, it's, if I disconnect this when I first try. Let's have a quick look. Yeah. That seems to be uh, something to do with it. And then I can connect this on. And it's fine. 12.1. Let's leave it connected on. Yeah. Yeah, that seems to be the case that if this is connected, 
it just draws a lot of power um so that's an interesting one i have no idea at this moment in time what would be making it do what it's doing but something obviously is yeah so this is something that could be very very interesting give it one more go ah no it's not that see now this time it didn't do it and that's on so we've eliminated that <laughs> okay so what's wrong with it i don't know it obviously can work doesn't seem to be intermittent but obviously sometimes it does this doesn't power up and draws a lot of power switch it off straight back on you see it's doing it again okay we've got to open this up and see what it's doing guys i'll take it apart so i've uh, opened up the uh, power supply and um i'm beginning to think now this actually might not be faulty um what we have in here uh, you can see straight away is three rows of heat sinks yeah and um the reason for that is that this power supply will have what's called pfc power factor correction and this is basically a way of making a power supply more energy efficient and um how it does that basically is after you have uh, your ac coming in the, the bridge rectifier which is here on this one yeah um, it has a circuit here a pfc circuit and this effector is a booster so it boosts the mains voltage obviously now converted to dc into a higher voltage typically around about 400 volts and there's a 400 volt capacitor here and that booster circuit which boosts the voltage it actually makes this more energy efficient and i think what's happening with this is when we switch it on the standby is running yeah but the pfc doesn't run until the main supply runs and when we turn the main supply on the, this pfc turns on and draws a massive current in to, to, to get this boost voltage going yeah and our light bulb obviously is limiting it to 60 watts so even though there's no no load on this uh, it draws you know a lot of power the light bulb comes on bright the voltage supply to this drops low and it just can't boost the voltage it just tries and continues to try yeah when i flicked it off and on a few times this capacitor had, i am assume had a certain amount of charge in it and now this boost circuit could get going could get the 400 and then the circuit the the um uh, current drawn by the power supply dropped very low because there's no load and i think that's what's going on and that would explain why it would work sometimes when i turn it on there's obviously no short circuit on the output which would cause it to draw a lot of current the power supply obviously can work so you can't have really an intermittent short circuit device i mean you can have an intermittent short circuit with like you know a piece of wire that's frayed and touching something else but you know you're not like when we're talking about switching transistors and fets they don't go intermittent if they're short they're short yeah when 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 these dead these dead yeah they don't they don't come back to life again so when they're short they're short so i actually believe there's probably nothing wrong with this and the only way we're going to find that out in truth is to switch the limit to, to life yeah let's just effectively we're going to connect power to this um directly so I'll still connect it to this but i'll set this now to live yeah the power's off at the moment so there's no longer this light bulb is now short circuited the power is going direct to the psu yeah and this will either go bang which i don't think it will or it'll just work yeah uh, we'll connect the uh the 5 volt and the, the, the 12 volt to this little analyzer and um right so i'm going to switch it on now if like this picture goes black that's because everything's just gone off including the computer which is recording yeah uh if something goes bang well <laughs> hope you enjoy it uh personally i think this will just switch on so we're ready for this here it goes yeah you see it, it's just on it's working so that there's there's no no fault on this at all uh so this is one instant where our light bulb our protection device actually caused the symptoms of a fault which didn't exist yeah um as soon as i saw the pfc i thought mm, i think i know what's going on with this i've seen i've not seen this before but i have seen power supplies where the pfc circuit causes the light bulb to come dim go off and then start flicking 
the continuous flicking. And if you switch it to live, it, it stops flicking on, but it goes off, obviously, and the thing powers up. So we can confidently actually say that there wasn't anything wrong with this. This is this is a phantom fault. Um, and I'm going to, you know, I, I need to upload this video because uh, phantom faults are something you, you need to learn about. Yeah, you need to know uh, when there might be a phantom fault. Otherwise, you'll spend a long time trying to diagnose a problem that isn't actually there. Uh, okay, short video. Uh, hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll see you very soon on the next one. Uh, ciao for now.